Welcome to the Henna Soup channel. My name is Khadija. If this is your first time tuning in, I welcome you to this amazing channel filled with henna hair color and expert tips on Ayurvedic hair care for me, Khadija. So I'm gonna bring you another reaction video because you guys definitely love those. We're gonna be reacting to a few ladies or are dyeing their hair with indigo. Let's jump right into indigo as a hair coloring herb and see you know, how these ladies did. This is gonna be my first time ever dyeing my hair. Um, I didn't wanna use any chemicals, so I decided to go for henna and indigo. I love this side by side too. It really shows like the henna color, like how that paste comes out and the indigo. I know some of you try to look for that specifically to see like how the dye is working and if it's changing. So if you wanna see the dye release, see the pooling, the orangey kind of, you know, pooling of the henna and the metallic -y kind of glaze of the indigo, just let it sit, don't stir it around and you'll see that. So I've never done this before, but luckily it actually came uh, with the instructions. To mix the henna, it says to mix it with uh, lemon juice or you can also mix it with apple cider vinegar. And I wanna point out, cause you guys know how I feel about lemon juice. Lemon juice can be very drying. So if you have or plan to use lemon, just know that you're adding another layer of dryness to your hair when you're using it, when you could just use warm to hot distilled water. Warm to hot distilled water really is the most gentlest for your hair, and that's what professionals are gonna be using in the salon. You're not going to go to a salon where they add other ingredients like lemon juice or like make a tea brew. It's not really gonna happen in the salon setting. And if you have sensitive scalp, just dilute the either the um, lemon juice with water or if you're using apple cider vinegar, you do the same, dilute it with water. You might find me in one of my past videos using lemon juice back, back, back in the day, but for body art, I don't really use too much lemon juice at all or, or even for body art because some people who are sensitive, they get kind of itchy. So if you've ever had like an itchy effect, look at like what kind of liquid you're using. This is all I got. I actually needed more as you will see later on in this video. So this is the henna. Yeah, she's definitely gonna need more. I mean, I would just use warm to hot distilled water and add it, mix it in with the lemon juice if that was my scenario at that moment. And if you wanna see some of our hair coloring videos, go back to right to Henna Sook's channel and look up at our hair coloring category dedicated to all the great hair coloring information. And we even have a professional hair coloring course that you could do right from home. So you have so many options right with henna soak. The 100 grams, it was uh, enough for me. So as you can see, I ran out of the lemon juice. So I used a little bit of water and then I changed my mind. I was like, no, let me just go ahead and make more uh, lemon juice. So I um, juiced two more extra lemon juice, which I added to it and then just mixed everything I'm just together. I'm wondering, is she using a paintbrush? I was wondering what she was mixing it with. Also, by the way, since she mentioned how much she used, you can definitely go to hennasoup.com, click henna101, and that has all the answers to questions like that. If you want to find out how much to use, measurements made easy, the recipes, so definitely check it out. And it says you should try and get the texture of uh, yogurt. Yes. Full fat yogurt. As you can see, I made my little bit too runny, but you know, this is the first time, so. <laughs> but it still works, that's the most important thing. But the only thing was that it was a bit um, a bit harder to work with because it was very a little bit runny. So next time I'll make it a little bit thicker. I actually left mine for 24 hours. So as you can see, the dye released very well. So this is my hair that I'm starting with. This is my hair wet. I shampooed my hair. I want to mention that you can shampoo your hair or you can pre-poo, but on damp hair, I always apply henna hair color on damp hair. I love her hair, by the way. Her hair is so, so nice. I love, 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 love her hair. Oh, I wish I was coloring her hair for her. So once I twisted my hair up, I actually used a towel to squeeze some of the excess water out. Please apply oil all the way around your head where you don't want the dye to stain your forehead, around your ear. 
Yes, applying some type of barrier around the hairline and on your ears is you just need, yes, you need to grab up our henna care balm. Boom, problem solved. So all I did, I applied the henna on my hair from scalp to the end of my hair and then I put it in the, like a little loose bantu knot just to keep it in place. So I put a plastic cup to cover my hair and then I used the tissue to remove a little bit of the excess henna that was around my um, forehead. And also go, go all the way around where there's no hair and just wipe the excess off. I really love how she did her hair. Like a perfect example of how to apply henna yourself at home. Very simple, sectioning the hair, little bantu knots, you know, that's exactly what I did when I did, we did a video with my sister when we did the Ayurvedic hair and growth strengthening regimen. It's so much easier to go in, you know, in every section and get the color right. That's how you get really good color results is really getting in there, not just the hair dye brush, but just using your hands to really get it in the hair really nice. So this is the hair after I washed it. And as you can see, it's got like a brown, I don't know. Yeah, it was looking more brown after I finished with the henna. Yeah, kind of, I know, I can see in the light how she's describing how she sees like a brown. It's really like the red. It's like, because of course henna dyes the hair red. It's giving an appearance of lightness and that's what henna does with the, the reddish tone that it has. It, it looks really pretty. Gives her a really nice appearance of uh, that just lightness and yeah, that kind of reddish tone does that for sure. Now I'm gonna go ahead again and then I'm gonna twist my hair back up again into small sections. So if, if you want, you can do, after you like rinse out all the henna hair color, because for black tones, you need to do a two step process. Like she's doing it correctly the right way. Do on henna first, then you're gonna follow with indigo. And so she can definitely do it right after. If you don't have time and you're like, you know, I'm not gonna have time to like do my hair right now and color it with the second step, you can come back to it in the morning. Just make sure it's like within three days of coloring your hair with henna because there will be new growth and you don't want the indigo to catch in any new growth or grays if you're covering grays because that's how indigo clings to the hair strands is by the henna and you want to get good coverage and you don't want to get a green hue from the indigo here we go now to mix the indigo you're gonna need to mix it with uh water cool water guys all right not hot but uh, cool. i'm not sure why we're mixing it with cool water it's definitely warm to hot water distilled water ideally but warm to hot not boiling no boiling and no cool because this really activates the dye release as soon as you finish mixing it says to leave it for one minute and then start applying it to your hair immediately okay um, a minute oh that is about the i guess i've heard some people say that they use it immediately after i still feel more comfortable and that's what i've been doing for for years and sometimes you know you don't want to change something that's working really well so 20 to 30 minutes has been because i do want to see some of that dye release i want to see some of that activation so guys um it actually says that um the resulting color takes a few days to settle to achieve the true color due to the oxidation process. So do not shampoo your hair after this process, guys. Well, the important thing with shampooing, not only is that sometimes it can take the color out, but you don't, if you've already cleansed your hair, you don't have to cleanse your hair again. You know, you wash your hair, you cleanse it in the beginning, and then you're, you're good to go, your hair is clean. Um, you know, so you don't have to do that step again. But using our cleansing co-wash to rinse it out, this helps so much and it's restorative, adds back a ton of moisture, like you cannot go wrong so i actually allowed my indigo um to stay on my head overnight but um this is actually the instructions that was on my list oh that's interesting so if i remember correctly her henna did she mention how long she left her henna in was it three to four hours usually for these steps you really only have to leave in the henna and the indigo three to four hours so coloring your hair with henna and indigo is always three to four hours. If you are susceptible to migraines or have finer hair strands, I do not recommend overnight treatments because it's a lot of weight and, and sometimes the whole, you know, it's a lot going on, you know, it could trigger a migraine and for finer hair strands, sometimes it could cause breakage because it's too much. 
So three to four hours is a great amount of time to leave it in your hair. And it says that if you want the deepest black, you need to leave it for about two hours. And for like a blue black, you need to leave it for like three hours plus. As you can see, my hair just looked like jet black. I mean, I didn't see anything bluey in there. So yeah. I think her hair came out delicious looking. That color is so beautiful. Her hair. I mean, I know it's damp, but the glistening still, I mean, ugh. But it made my hair dry, so I went straight ahead and I deep conditioned for two good hours. So the deep conditioning can pull color out for sure. So what would have helped with like the moisture levels as far as like her, how her hair would feel after the whole process. Adding aloe vera powder, which I don't see that was mentioned. Um, I talk a lot about aloe vera powder. Please, if you definitely want to check out videos that I have on aloe vera powder, its uses, its benefits, go to Hannah Sook. Make sure you're always subscribing and getting those notifications on our channel. Just like type in the word aloe and every single video about aloe will come right up. And it's looking very, <laughs> very black. And that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, would I use it again? Definitely. Definitely I am going to use it again. It's a long process, but I think it's worth it. For the fact that it's not chemical. You know, I didn't use any chemical in my hair, which is what I really didn't want to do. So I love that. I'm glad she had a really good experience. That's really all that i want to see i want to see people like have the great results give new things a try you know coloring with your hair with henna you know it's supposed to be fun it's self-care it's diy so let's catch another video that i got for you guys let's see someone else try it out hi everyone welcome back to my channel and if you're new to my channel welcome my name is mimi oh i mean i can't even i can't even wait to start this video i mean look at the, look at her hair her hair is so long. Woo! Her hair looks really healthy. Oh, I cannot wait to see. I wonder how much she used. So today in this video, I'm gonna share with you the two-step process of coloring your hair black using henna and indigo. So first, let's prepare the henna. Here, I have my henna powder. I'm using 150 grams of henna for my hair. And there is lemon juice. That's one whole lemon. And in the cup, there is uh, lukewarm water and while adding the water and the lemon juice add a little bit by little and mix the henna we want the henna to be lump free and really smooth <laughs> so just, i wonder if people have seen my since i've been on youtube forever you guys can let me know how long have we been on youtube so i wonder if some people saw some of my videos and were like remember to add your liquid like really slowly you know uh that that, that would be kind of cute to know like if people saw some of my stuff and was inspired you know to do this as well she's only 150 grams so for what i saw from her hair length and she has a lot of hair 150 grams sounds like too little. Like that's like shoulder length hair. Um, I might have almost said 300 grams. I don't know, what do you guys think? Now we have to keep it aside at least for 12 hours. Best if uh, it can be kept overnight. So she definitely left it out for a pretty long time. Dye release for henna is typically about three to four hours. Um, it looks it looks pretty good. I mean, the, the change is there. So as you can see, the ends of my hair and the middle portion of my hair, especially the ends are completely br brown and we will be dyeing them black. I like that she used a natural light to really show people what the true color of her hair, because of course in indoor lighting it looked like her hair was pretty much black but you can see her hair is a little bit lighter than black uh so let's see, let's see how this goes so here as you guys can see i have applied the henna only on the lens and the ends of my hair oh that's why she didn't use as much because she only did a certain section i did do i, I will mention this that if you have not seen the video of me dyeing my daughter matina's hair she has like a honey brown type of uh, hair tone, which is getting darker and darker. As that's, that's just how my kids, their hair is. It it's kind of starts out light and gets darker over time. And we did the ends of her hair. That's almost how I did it. <laughs> I just kind of, people were really mad at me. You have to see that video. It's super cute. We had a lot of fun. We were just having fun. I don't do uh, ombres professionally. I was just 
Me, my daughter, Hannah, let's try to dye your ends and see what happens. That's exactly what it was. So if you haven't seen that video, you definitely need to check that video out. Leave the henna on your hair for three hours and then wash it off using only water. So next day we are going to prepare the indigo. Here I have the same amount of indigo powder with lukewarm water and a little bit of salt because salt helps to release the dye from indigo. Oh, I, I've never heard anyone say that the salt helps to release the dye. Usually people have said, you know, I don't use salt and indigo personally. And we have definitely shared with them that it can help the indigo adhere to the hair strands better, like helps it cling a little bit better. I don't personally use it. I didn't really see a huge difference with the salt personally. Um, I think that the way you're applying and massaging it and leaving it in and opening up the hair, I think those steps are more relevant to good color uh, deposit rather than the salt. That, and that's just my opinion at this time from what I've seen personally. Firstly, you aren't supposed to oil your hair after you wash the henna and indigo of your hair because last time I did it and while I was oiling it, I could see a lot of color from the indigo was coming off. Yes, so that can definitely happen. Like heavy oiling or oils can sometimes pull the color out. Um, if we just added a little bit of aloe vera powder, that would help with the moisture. Using the cleansing co-wash helps a lot. That just combats a lot of that dryness. Let's see how her hair turned out. So here is the final result. Uh, as you guys can see that my whole entire hair has turned black. Uh, there was like brown highlights from the henna before and the ends of my hair were totally brown and they are once again black which I'm totally happy about. So if you want to color your hair black definitely give this a try. Yes love how her hair came out gorgeous and it's long and healthy. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So I got one more video for you about using indigo to dye hair. Oh, let's see. Okay. Oh, this one's going to be very interesting. Are you guys ready for it? This one's very different. So let's get it. Are you tired? Because I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of my natural hair being brown. And I want it to be that shiny luster, like that luster of like jet black. I, I want to say right away, you know, I always want to say something right away. Her energy is amazing. She's like, oh, I want it to be jet black, beautiful, gorgeous, sexy. Well, she didn't say that, but you know, I did. I've always seen jet black hair as just like bomb, healthy, moisturized, shiny. Like I'm talking Rihanna under my umbrella black. Sierra, um, all of her videos black, jet black. That's what I'm going for. And if you are sick and tired of the shenanigans with your natural hair still being a 1B, pushing a, a two and a three and a four, just keep watching this video. My natural hair is not like the lightest brown, but it definitely is brown. I'm going to insert some clips here, pictures. Black when I was born, over the years, somehow it has lightened. Yeah, it, maybe it lightened uh, also because you now the sun and the weather, the area you live in affects your hair. It sometimes it happens. Maybe, maybe that's the case. But I wanted to try this natural powder. It's called indigo. Now you're supposed to mix it with henna powder, but I'm not going to be mixing it with henna powder because henna powder kind of uh, turns your hair like a reddish oranges color. And to me, when I kept doing my research, it was showing if your hair was blonde to do the henna powder first and then do the indigo. She didn't see our channel. Oh, if you guys are new to the henna soup channel, please subscribe and hit that bell because you must be missing our videos on all the henna hair color and all the curly beauties that I have done henna hair color for. The purpose of the henna is to act as a base for the indigo to cling to the hair strand. That's the purpose. Indigo is gonna overpower the henna in 99, maybe 98% of the situations. You know, it's, that's how good that indigo should be. That it's gonna cover over that henna. 
So, and her hair is pretty dark. Oh, I feel bad. <laughs> I wish she would have asked us about that. I don't see any grays, so I don't think that something crazy will happen. I'm not really sure though, because boy, if you use indigo and you got grays and you didn't use henna in the first step uh, or mixed with it or however, she's going for black, so you still gotta do henna first and then indigo. It's about it being a base, but man, if there was grays involved, those, those grays will be green. I did purchase this indigo powder online. It was Amazon Prime. It was about $5.50 for one packet. This brand, the Zinnia Indigo Powder, is chemical free, PPD free, whatever that means. I highly recommend that those beautiful people watching, yes, you, that if you do not know what PPD is, first, Google that and know what it is before you color your hair with henna and indigo. It just is important to know. It really, really is important because not all henna and indigo and coloring herbs, none of that is created equally, which is another great article that you need to check out on our blog. So as you can see, my hair is definitely dirty. The first step to do is to wash your hair. It says to do this process on clean hair. I'm going to just hop in real quick in the shower, wash my hair. A few moments later. If you guys watched the video where I cut my husband's hair, you saw that I made a homemade cape. So I did the same thing here with the trash bag. I wasn't sure if the indigo would stain my skin or my clothes. I think that's super cute. Very, very, very cute. But you know what I do prefer? I still prefer the capes, which you can get for cheap on Amazon too. But the capes really um, cover everything. Because I see some holes peeking out here and I'm like, oh, I'm going to fall right there. I'm gonna get it right there and do a stain. Ooh, I can slip right in that spot right there. Yes, even though this is a natural product, guys, I want this disclaimer everywhere. And I will say this on behalf of the whole henna so company that you must do a patch test on your skin and the inner arm, put a little paste there. Once you mix it up, put a little paste there and test. Just because something's natural does not mean you will not have an allergic reaction. So please test every new who, herb, essential oil, anything new, do so with caution. One lady, her, I mean, she got swollen all in the face. She couldn't even see it. Yeah, it's on, it's on YouTube, my dears. It's on YouTube. Get you a mixing bowl right here. Then I'm going to pour this indigo powder into the bowl. After I finish pouring all of the mixture into the bowl. I've never seen anyone post that you could not use plastic. Hmm. Usually I hear like, don't use the metal, don't you, you know, don't use stainless steel, but the plastic, you can use plastic, it's just porous. I went ahead and added some salt. Now you don't have to use any fancy salt. You don't have to get Himalayan. Just get you the regular, you know, 88 cent. Great value. Shout out to Walmart. Oh, and put it in there. <laughs> the reason why I'm doing this is because everyone in the comments on Amazon was saying that the salt helps activate it. I've never seen that people think it makes activated. I do not. <laughs> I know that I, the second time I'm saying this in this video, I'm surprised that I'm going to be seeing this again about salt but salt doesn't help activate it I've, i don't use salt at all like i don't ever use salt i never have i and i'm now i'm thinking like i i'm pretty sure i've never used salt before and activating indigo and i have not had any issues so <laughs> i'm gonna follow them because they apparently know what they're talking about i've never used Santa before and i've never used indigo before so that's why i added the salt after I added the salt, I put some warm water in there. It's an ad! And I mixed it up and let it sit for 12 minutes undisturbed. Letting it sit for 15 minutes and then I took off the saran wrap and smelled it. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those people that don't really appreciate the smell of indigo. So I would definitely be adding some essential oil, yes, to make it smell good. but. Her face says it all. I'm not a fan of the smell of indigo personally. Girl, this smells like Popeyes and I ain't talking about Popeyes chicken. It smells just like the spinach that Popeye eats. So it definitely has that earthy vegetable smell to it. It's like frozen peas. That's exactly what it smells like. It's frozen peas. When I put it on my hair, it felt like I was putting on like a mud or clay in my hair. 
Um, didn't really feel too bad, but I did have gloves on my hands just in case it decided to stain my hands. So keep that in mind if you decide to do this. And it actually was pretty easy going in. Um, I didn't have any clumps. As you can see, when it was going through my hair, it went really smooth. So I put that all throughout my hair. Each section I had, I put a little scrunchie on it and put it in a little bun. That way it would just kind of hold it in. The one thing I would say about this is my hair was still wet. I have low porosity hair and I think it would be a lot better if you let your hair be damp or almost dry before doing this. Uh, simply because I think that the color will hold better and if your hair is wet, it does drip a lot more on the floor. Yeah, damp is good. It doesn't have to be dripping wet, but damp, you know, uh, helps it. Uh, it's with the slip. That's why the water is giving it a lot more slip and it helps the application go on easier. So you can see me looking down and it just keeps dripping everywhere. Your hair actually starts to turn black as the indigo is. Oh, you see? Did you guys catch that? The indigo got her. Oh, I'm going to fall right there. I'm gonna get her. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. The indigo got you. Oh, the cape from Amazon would have been good, girl. Next time, next time, next time. Oh, she's using straight indigo. I am so glad this beautiful young lady does not have gray hair because she would, I, if she sees in the light, it's gonna leave a green hue even on her hair, even though it's, it's pretty dark and maybe hard to see, but is she had gray hair, boy. Ooh, no, you would have some green hair. I put on just a scrunchie on two sides and made two little puff balls, put on a shower cap. She got indigo, indigo everywhere. Oh my goodness. The cape would have helped. And a t-shirt too. I usually wear a t-shirt and a cape. Oh no, no, no. And I let my hair sit for two and a half hours this way. You want to let it sit longer than you would with a regular box dye simply because it's natural. It's going to take a little bit longer for the color to set in. After the two and a half hours were up, I rinsed my hair out in the sink and it didn't take a long time to rinse all of it out of my hair. Now, I did not shampoo my hair. That is a crucial part. You have to wait a few days before you shampoo your hair. So I just put in a little bit of my Design Essentials conditioner, put that in my hair and I wore my hair up in like a, I guess you would call it a puff at the top of my head for like three days. After three days were up, then I shampooed my hair and blow dried it, and these were my results. I will show you a side-by-side -side comparison before and after. The before is on the left, and the after is on the right. I mean, I think there's like a, a slight difference and whatnot, but mind you, I definitely don't think she should do this a step this way again. It I probably actually would have gotten even darker black had she had the henna as the base in this step and it'll also last longer too if she would have went in natural light i'm really curious if in natural light there was any green hue whatsoever because this is all indoor lighting i wonder maybe she'll make a comment on this video let me know because i'm definitely really curious about if she found how long it lasted and did it leave any type of green hue i'm a believer in trying new things just do not try that if any gray hair come through, no, 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 don't do it that way for sure. And then some aloe vera powder for moisture, that's gonna help a lot, cleansing hair wash. But overall, her hair is very gorgeous, very beautiful. So my friends, this brings us to a conclusion. I wanna thank you for staying with me on this amazing Indigo Reaction video series that we just did, three amazing videos, three gorgeous ladies. Stay tuned because you know every Sunday we're dropping videos and we got the 30 day hair challenge going on. So if you're not sure what that is, just head to the description. And as promised, I told you I was gonna share an amazing application video that you guys are definitely gonna love that I want you to watch. So this application video gives you the best tips on how to get the color to be applied the best. And I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>